Hello friends, namaste and welcome back to my show. In this series of videos, we are learning about the gateway experience. And now we must learn something about our mind, our thoughts and importantly, the place where it happens, which is the brain. This video is a bit lengthy, around 14 minutes to be precise. But let me assure you, this video is both important as well as interesting. So please stay tuned. The CIA investigation into the gateway experience or the hemi-sync method revealed that it is based on sound principles of neuroscience, psychology and modern physics. This picture shows the main regions of the brain. In the front, up to the crown of the head, we have what we call as the frontal lobe. And this area handles all executive functions like planning, problem solving, judgment, social behavior, learning new stuff, paying attention, and all the other stuff that goes with it. Moving a little further back, we have what we call as the parietal lobe, which deals with the sensory perception and integration. It is also the part which interprets inputs from other areas of the body and integrates them. Moving further back, we have what is called as the occipital lobe, which deals with visual perception, color, form, shape, and movement or motion that happens around us. Further down is the cerebellum. And on the side of our head, around the temples and behind that, is what we call as the temporal lobes. These lobes, one on each side, on the left and right, they handle or process long-term memory, our emotions, language, learning ability of languages and symbols, and controlling automatic reactions such as appetite, hunger, thirst, etc. The brain is made up of what is called gray matter and white matter. White matter is made up of nerve fibers, and gray matter is made up of cell bodies. Gray matter receives incoming information and regulates the outgoing information. On the other hand, white matter serves to transmit signals to other regions of the brain, the spinal cord and the rest of the body. The graphic that you see on the left hand side of the screen represents a map of the brain areas dedicated to motor processing, in other words, for moving different anatomical divisions of the body. The primary motor cortex, which is a part of the brain, handles signals coming from the premotor area in the frontal lobes, about what we talked a little earlier. The graphic on the right hand side represents a map of the brain areas dedicated to sensory processing for different anatomical divisions of the body. And if you take, a, take the picture together, you will find there are correspondences. And this graphic illustrates the relationship between our motor neural network and its correspondence with our sensory system. That means signals that are being sensed from the periphery or from inside the body. As we learn more about meditation, hemi-sync, hypnosis and other techniques, the importance of this graphic will become apparent and will be referred to again and again. It is also important to know that the brain has certain regions that are dedicated to the pain network and these are marked in red. They respond to physical pain as well as emotional issues such as bereavement, being treated unfairly. In other words, pain which is physical, mental or emotional the same areas are triggered. Some areas of the brain are dedicated to the reward network or they are often called as the pleasure centers and these are marked in blue. They respond to physical pleasure as well as to feelings which make you feel good such as charity, cooperation, being treated fairly and so on. Together with what we saw in the previous graphic, all forms of meditation use this information to function. And that will become clear in our later videos. So you can always refer back to these two important diagrams in case you wish to refresh your knowledge at that time. One principle we must understand quite clearly is that pain has a negative correlation with pleasure. Pain diminishes pleasure and conversely, 
pleasure alleviates pain. Also, pain relief produces pleasure. This will help you to deal with yourself and with others when you are dealing with pain or pleasure. The brain has two sections, a split right in the middle. And there is a left half or left hemisphere and a right half or a right hemisphere. These two hemispheres of the brain are what we call very often as the left brain and the right brain. But it is important to understand that the two function together but differently. The two halves of the two hemispheres of the brain are interconnected, not just physically but through information exchange also. The link that joins them is known as the corpus callosum. These are two pictures of the location of the corpus callosum. It is shown in green in the diagram. What you see from the rear is shown in the diagram on the left and the view from the sides is shown in the picture on the right. As mentioned earlier, there is a constant flow of trillions of bits of information across the two halves and this is shown schematically in the graphic that you see on the screen. Let me remind you that it's a very advanced and sophisticated network system, far greater, far larger and far more complicated than any man-made information network on this planet. The two halves or the two hemispheres of the brain act differently. There is a left brain that deals with the logical, rational, analytical, factual, and mathematical ideas. By contrast, the right hemisphere or the right brain is creative, intuitive, artistic, imaginative, and most importantly, something that makes us so human, emotional. Here is a simple flow path of information when it is sensed and processed by the brain. The left hemisphere does the job of screening all incoming stimulus. Then it processes it and it assigns meaning to it. It does so through the use of logic and skills that have been learned over the course of a lifetime. Following that, it is passed on to the right hemisphere. And then the right accepts this without any questions. It assumes that the left hemisphere has done its job in sifting through the sand and handing over something that is of real use, which the right can work on itself. The right is thus restricted to a framework set up by the left. And this constrains the outcome. If we have to be really creative, really intuitive, we must find the means to bypass the constraints that are set up by the logical left hemisphere. Is that possible? Can we go against nature? Well, nature itself provides a solution through techniques which mankind has learned over the last many millennia. As suggested in the previous slide, is it indeed possible to bypass the left hemisphere so that the right can be in its true element of creativity and intuition? As a matter of fact, it's happening all the time. It happens in boredom. At that point of time, the left brain is actually virtually switched off or when we are distracted. It also happens when we are in semi-sleep conditions. When the body is at complete rest, the left has been freed from its instinctive approach to incoming signals. And in such a state, we are in an ideal situation for suggestions for freedom beyond restricting conditions. And this is going to be the point of exploration in the videos that are going to follow. We are actually quite familiar with many techniques for expanding our consciousness. When I talk about expanding our consciousness, it means that our right half and left half are able to act more independently, particularly the constraints of the left half over the right half are dropped. The better known techniques are those such as hypnosis, it has been used effectively in the treatment of pain, depression, anxiety, phobias, and even in post-surgical recovery. The other one that we are quite familiar with is the transcendental meditation. It is another technique in which we can effectively 
make use of for lowering stress and blood pressure and numerous other physical ailments, for improving concentration and for getting creative insights. Similarly, biofeedback is yet another technique which has proved to be invaluable for treatment of migraine, regulating heart rate and many other bodily functions. We shall look at these in the videos that follow in more detail so that you will be able to tie up the information on the brain and mind along with the techniques of meditation which will finally take us to the hemisync or the gateway experience. Neuroscientists can measure brain activity in terms of electrical activity. This activity can be detected as brain waves and these waves follow a certain pattern depending on the activity that the mind is engaged in. The waves are denoted by Greek alphabets. Here is a graphical summary of the principal types of brain waves. Brain waves, which are known as gamma waves, happen when the mind is engaged in problem solving and is concentrated on a particular issue. And these waves are having a frequency greater than 35 hertz. Beta waves are the waves that happen in the mind when the mind is busy and is active as happens in our day-to-day -day activity. The frequency range of beta waves is between 12 and 35 hertz. Alpha waves occur when the mind is restful and is reflective and it can happen in states of meditation. This is between the range of 8 to 12 hertz approximately. This is when the mind is open to suggestions, new ideas. Theta waves happen when the mind is in a state of drowsiness and the frequency range is between 4 to 8 hertz. And this is the time when a lot of healing activity occurs in the body. Even lower than this is the range of the delta waves, which happens during sleep or deep sleep or in dreaming state as well. And that happens between one half to four hertz. So the question that comes to the mind is, what do all these techniques, which we mentioned earlier, happen to do? And these techniques include transcendental meditation, hypnosis, biofeedback, and also the gateway experience or the hemisync. All these essentially affect the amplitude and frequency of the wave pattern of the brain. But other than the hemisync, they all require years of training and practice. The gateway experience, by contrast, can be viewed as a shortcut because it requires lesser practice, is more effective, and is better documented in terms of its technique. To summarize, the hemisync or the gateway experience will affect the brain waves to bring strength, to bring focus, and to bring laser sharp coherence. So friends, that brings me to the end of this video. We shall meet once again in the next video and continue with our exploration of the gateway experience or the hemi-sync method. Thank you very much for your attention and bye-bye.